Hunger is something that tends to happen in a predictable manner. If you eat, you tend to be less hungry. And if you haven't eaten in a while, you tend to be more hungry. That much is obvious to, well, just about everyone. However, the mechanisms that make that all happen are far less understood by the general population. So in this piece of content, I'd like to spend some time explaining the science of a potent hunger-inducing neuroprotein known as neuropeptide Y. Learn your body, a science-based education. This type of content is based on a study using animal models to allow for greater manipulation and allow for more control over the experimental conditions. The study, my notes, and any following amendments are linked to this content for you. Overall, the study design is relatively simple. Neuropeptide Y is injected into mice and the researchers observe the change in behavior, eating habits, and fat gain. They compared the results of neuropeptide Y injection by doing the exact same injection of the liquid containing NPY, neuropeptide Y, but without the NPY present. So they could compare the two situations with the only difference being the presence of NPY in one group of mice. Briefly, before going into the data on how NPY affects eating habits and fat gain, allow me to offer some physiological mechanisms so we're both on the same page. NPY is secreted by neurons, brain cells, in a region of the brain called the hypothalamus, primarily. These neurons, known as AGRP NPY neurons, are stimulated to release NPY by other hormones released from the fat cells, the stomach, the intestines, and other areas of the body. When stimulated to release NPY, NPY binds particular receptors on other neurons that stimulate eating. These receptors are called the Y receptors. Not altogether creative, but nonetheless, it's easy to remember. Receptor Y1 and receptor Y5 of the family of receptors are considered to be the main receptors by which NPOI binds, inducing its hunger-promoting effects. So looking at the data, the long-term exposure to neuropeptide Y did lead to increased food intake, as well as neuropeptide Y-like molecule that is more targeted towards the receptor Y1. Looking at weight gain, the results become clear, as animals exposed to neuropeptide Y gained significant weight, as did the other two neuropeptide Y-like molecules, compared to animals that did not get exposed to any of the NPY conditions. Interestingly, when these mice were restricted on the amount they could eat, they did not gain weight, only when they were supplied with as much food as they wanted. Ultimately, looking at fat gain, all three neuropeptides increased fat gain when allowed to eat at will, but not when limited on food intake. So this data confirms that neuropeptide Y, as well as similar molecules that bind the receptor Y1 or receptor Y5 on the brain cells, leads to increased food consumption, weight gain, and fat gain. However, that isn't the end of the story, as neuropeptide Y also may affect metabolism, so not only intake, but expenditure as well, with some other subtleties. If you're interested, check out the attached video content and continue the journey. Hope to speak with you then. Cheers.